And so I'm here from the computer science side of things. Um, I actually do research on the ways that the methods that Ravi was talking about could potentially be discriminatory. Um, so the question that I'm interested in is if we were to implement evidence-based methods, would it actually help? Right? Um, and as we've already heard a little bit, one of the main things that we need to think about here is evaluation. Uh, okay. Um, so the reason that we need to think about evaluation is because we can't rely on the algorithms to do the right thing, right? They don't have any inherent understanding of morals or what is right and what is wrong. It's up to us to explain that and codify it. Um, and so what that means is that if the training data, that input that Ravi was talking about, includes race, then the algorithm, as far as it understands, is free to explicitly make a decision based on race. If the input includes zip code or something else that correlates with race, then as far as the algorithm knows, it's free to go ahead and figure out the race and then make an explicit determination based off of that. Um, so it's up to us to do good evaluation to try to fix this problem. Um, one of the unfortunately common methods of evaluating these algorithms is based on accuracy. Um, and so Ravi was already talking about this a little bit. So this is the percentage of correct predictions. And uh, just to give you a little example, so Facebook has been going through this whole thing with NIM wars, um, where Native Americans have been finding that their names are not classified as real. And I don't actually know if an algorithm is making this determination, but let's say hypothetically that it is. Um, we could see how that algorithm might end up seeming good to Facebook, because the Native American population is small in the US, it's about 2% of the US population which means that Facebook could potentially give the incorrect answer for every single Native American name, and that would still only represent 2% of the names, and so Facebook's algorithm would have a 98% accuracy, and Facebook would say 98%, that sounds pretty good, I think I'm doing well, it's not a problem, right? But if you dive into it deeper, you'll notice that they had a 0% accuracy on the Native American names, right? And so that should be seen as a problem, I think. And so one of the ways of fixing that is just by looking at the accuracy per group and saying what is the effect of this algorithm, of this policy, per group. Another way that discrimination can sneak into the evaluation of these methods is because accuracy looks at the predicted outcomes versus the true outcomes, um, or perhaps the outcomes as they have been historically reported, if those historically reported outcomes were themselves discriminatory, then the algorithm is really just trying to pattern match against those discriminatory outcomes, right? And it's going to be seen as being better, as having higher accuracy, if it is better able to match those historical decisions. So if those decisions themselves are discriminatory, then the algorithm's goal becomes to be discriminatory. Right? There's another subtle issue here once we get into questions of risk assessment, which is that it's only able to compare against the historical decisions, not necessarily what would have happened. So if somebody was sentenced to, go, to stay in prison for a longer time, then that means that in evaluating the algorithm, we're sort of left to assume that that person would have recommitted, meaning we always made the right decision by sending them to prison for longer. So these are, these are more subtle ways that bias can creep in. Um, and then finally, this is a general problem that applies to machine learning algorithms, that it's important that they actually be generalizable. Um, as Ravi was describing, what we're assuming here is that past performance dictates future performance, that we can make these predictive assumptions based on past data, um, which means that if we've overfit the algorithm um, to the past data, it might not be generalizable. So going back to that Facebook example, if we've taken everyone's name that we know and we know they have real names and we've written them all down in a long list, and then a new person comes along who we've never met before, we could try to make an algorithm that just checks that new name against the existing list. This isn't gonna be a very generalizable algorithm because it won't allow us to meet any new people and know whether they, their names are real or not. Right? Um, similarly, we need to be able to apply the algorithms generally, but also in the specific context that they were created for. So if a risk assessment algorithm is created and evaluated on an adult population, it can't necessarily be directly applied to a juvenile population. There might be other issues, and it might not actually be applicable in that context. 
Um, so finally, I wanted to leave with some good news, which is that researchers on the computer science side are in fact working on this, and some of you are in the room. Um, and specifically are working on ways that these types of algorithms can be applied and can be applied in a fair way. And the important thing to notice here is exactly what definition of fair is being used um, because that will then be the crux of the matter, right? So computer scientists can come to you and say, I have a fair algorithm and your response should be, what is your definition of fair? So this all goes back to evaluation. And the second point is one of interpretability. Um, so it can be useful to actually understand what aspects are going into the algorithm and how an algorithm is making the decision. That does not necessarily mean that it was fair. Um, and I also wanted to note that it doesn't necessarily mean that you can even tell if it was fair. So auditing these types of algorithms, even if you know everything that's going on with them, is still very hard and is still an area of active research. Um, and so I, I wouldn't want us to leave saying, well, as long as everyone publishes their models and they're interpretable, we'll be okay. Um, it's a more complex issue than that. So that's it. Thank you.